Hi there, my name is Brittany Raftis and I'm a registered dietitian at the David Braley Sport Medicine Clinic at McMaster University. And today I'm sharing a quick video with uh, a bit of a review on pre-workout nutrition. So kind of the main concepts in a nutshell of what we look for in our pre-workout period of time for fueling. So a couple things just to review before we get started. The pre-workout period of time it is basically considered the four hours prior to training or competition or workout. So this is the timeline that we think about when we're thinking about pre-workout nutrition. The other thing I will say is keep in mind that pre-workout nutrition is very individual. It's very different for everyone. It depends mostly on your digestion, which varies from person to person. So you may find that what works for you might be very different from what works for your teammates. So I'm going to share here again some kind of quick uh, general tips. Um, so use this kind of as a guide and then adjust it based on what works for you. All right, so using this kind of visual, um, I like this as kind of a quick summary. So I'll just kind of walk you through what this is highlighting here and what concepts you wanna keep in mind uh, for your pre-workout nutrition fueling. Again, you know, what works for you might be different from this here, but use this as a guide, try some things out and see what works for you. Um, so first of all, the biggest kind of um, piece or triangle here is coming from carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are our main source of fuel for our workout. So for that reason, we wanna focus our fueling in this pre-workout period of time on mainly carbohydrate fuel. So the bulk of what you'll be eating in these four hours should be coming from carbohydrates. That's what's helping you to build up your energy stores, build up your muscle stores, your glycogen stores, and ultimately help you to have a full tank of energy when it comes to your actual training time. So the bulk of what we eat during this whole period will come from carbohydrate. So out of our three macronutrients here, carbohydrates are going to be the quickest to digest. So that's why we see carbohydrates used as fuel during this whole four hour period of time. Um, that's because they tend to be pretty quick to digest on their own. Protein is a little bit slower to digest, so we start to limit our protein intake or reduce our protein intake as we get closer to our training time. And fats are the longest digesting macronutrients, so this is what we limit the most out of these three nutrients. So just to break down this timeline here, so this kind of helps you to see that what you eat and the portion of what you eat, so what you eat and how much you eat, will be dependent on how much time you have left before training. So for example, if you have three to four hours to digest before you start training, that for most people is typically enough time to digest what we would consider a full balanced meal. So we've got some examples there. Um, so if it's breakfast, we've got an oatmeal bowl there with some nuts or seeds or nut butter, for example, fruit. You can see that this is mostly a carbohydrate kind of meal. Um, but with some protein and healthy fats in there too. A couple other examples for more of kind of a, a later in the day meal, we've got some rice and chickpeas and greens, and then we've got a pasta and chicken uh, meal there as well. So again, at this time, kind of what we would consider to be a full balanced meal, um, focus mostly on carbohydrates, but also including some protein and healthy fats in there as well. As we get closer to training, so when we reach the two hour mark here, this is when we want to be a little bit more cautious about our portion of food that we're eating. We don't really have enough time now to digest a full portion of food or full meal portion of food, but here we still want to make sure that we are including carbs, so still fueling mostly with carbohydrate, but also including some protein here and a little bit of healthy fats are okay too. The reason that we want to make sure that we're still getting that protein um, and a little bit of healthy fats here is to help to slow digestion a little bit so that this snack or small meal can kind of carry us two hours into our competition or training. So the examples I have here are a smoothie, which works really great, especially if you have a more sensitive stomach. Smoothies tend to digest a bit faster, so they're easier on your gut in this pre-workout period of time. The other example I have here is some Greek yogurt with granola and fruit. So again, focusing on carbohydrates here with some protein, some healthy fats. Um, in this two hour pre-workout period of time. As we get even closer to training, so say one hour left, um, this is when we no longer have enough time to really digest significant amounts of protein or fats. Most people here will be 
uh, kind of most uh, prone to digestive issues with what they eat at this time. So if you do need to have something here in this one hour mark, usually what works best for most people is easy to digest carbohydrates. So the examples I have here are a banana or a simple granola bar. That tends to be what works best for people if they need um, a little bit of a snack in this one hour period um, before training. That being said, uh, digestion is very different for everybody, and it also depends on what your typical diet looks like. So if you typically eat, say, a higher fiber diet, maybe you eat lots of beans and lentils, whole grains, whole fruits and vegetables, you'll likely be able to tolerate a little bit more fiber closer to training. So you might be able to still have some whole grains or higher fiber fruits and vegetables or those types of things throughout this whole kind of pre-workout period of time. Same thing goes for fats. If you typically eat a lot of healthy fats in your diet, you'll likely be able to tolerate a little bit more fat than say your teammate who doesn't eat a lot of those foods regularly um, closer to your training time. So you might find that you can tolerate some protein or healthy fats at this one hour mark, for example. Um, but in most cases, uh, carbohydrates are gonna be what you wanna stick to. The other thing I'll mention is that if you have very long training time, so maybe you train for four hour sessions or more, um, or just a long period of time without a break, and you find that you typically get hungry during that time, you'll likely want to try and include some carbohydrates and protein at this one hour pre-workout snack, just to help that carbohydrate digest a little bit slower and essentially hold you for longer and prevent you from getting too hungry in the middle of your workout. So again, this is kind of a snapshot of the basics uh, that we think about considering in that pre-workout period of time. Um, everybody will be a little bit different, so try some things out and see what works best for you. And just to highlight again that this doesn't mean that you should or need to be eating every hour up until you work out. It just means that what you have in the portion should change based on how much time you have left before you train. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you are looking to book an appointment at the David Braley Sport Medicine Clinic, I've included the phone number here. This is the number that you call to book an appointment with dietitian myself or any other practitioner. We, of course, aren't open in the current time just because of COVID-19 restrictions. So if you are interested in booking a dietitian appointment, I've included my email there as well. We are accepting virtual appointments, so if you need some support at the current time, uh, we can definitely set up a virtual appointment for you. Thank you so much for listening and stay well.